On today's show, what could be an NBA Finals preview is one of the best games of the season, but do the Celtics have any answers for Nikola Jokic? We talk about that, plus Anthony Edwards taking over from Minnesota, Ben Simmons' latest injury, and more. All of that coming up on today's Locked On NBA. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On NBA. Wes Goldberg here with Adam Marez. However, you might be tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app. Thanks for making Locked On NBA your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NBA. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Let's start with what could be a finals preview. Heat Mavericks. Uh, just kidding. Just kidding, Adam. We're going to talk about uh, Nuggets Celtics. That was a good one. That was a good one, Wes. <laughs> Nuggets win it 115 to 109. Primetime game. They sweep the season series over Boston. Nikola Jokic had 32 points, 12 rebounds, and 11 assists. Dominated the game. His assist to Aaron Gordon on that lob with 20 seconds left. The dagger and maybe the most impressive play from a game full of impressive plays from both sides. What did you think of that lob, Adam? Like, Jokic just, he still finds ways to surprise me. You know, like, that, that to, for him to even see Gordon uh, coming baseline with all the bodies that were between him and Gordon, just, again, they, he always finds ways to surprise me. What did you think about that play? What's funny, Wes, is it's becoming the Nuggets' signature finishing move. Mm. They, they've had it several times this year where the game has ended either a literal game winner like tonight where it, you know that was kind of the bucket they needed or up eight 30 seconds to go and it was the de facto ender you know it was like this that was the exclamation point so they have this thing where and I honestly believe this to be true I know some of this is a little hyperbole kind of fun but I honestly think it to be true in the clutch the Nuggets just beat you every way and that's always the last way. It's like, okay, we beat you here, so you have to adjust. Then we beat you here, now you have to adjust. And the last punch is always the AG lob one. And it was in this game. I think Jamal Murray's jealous. Because <laughs> him and Jokic had the best two-man game on the yeah. team. Arguably the best two-man game in the league. With all due respect to Steph and Draymond, one or two, whatever order you want to put it in. But that Aaron Gordon lob from Jokic, it's creeping up there. I don't yeah. know. Is Jamal Murray like side-eyeing? He's like... Man, I could get up. I could dunk. Nobody ever. Well, <laughs> well, first of all, Aaron Gordon, man, he is such an unbelievable dunker. I mean, he had four dunks in this game it that were just... all highlight worthy. I mean, he had, he grabbed a rebound at his ankles, tomahawked it back in. He had a lob that, for no reason other than artistry, he reversed in midair reversed to catch it. it. He had no need to. He just was like, you know what? I'll just do it this no way. No need to tomahawk the other one either, but he just wanted to. <laughs> It was unbelievable that he was able to get all of those. But I don't think he, they're jealous. Here's the thing. And if you don't watch a lot of Nuggets, you really don't see this. Porter and KCP are the corner three-point spacers. Mm -hmm. Most of the actions are either Jokic and Murray or Jokic, Murray, and AG. They involve all three of them. And so, you know, that's why I say you go to that in the clutch and it's like, okay, Jokic scores. So the defense adjusts and then Murray scores. And by the time it's all said and done, you, you over adjust on both of those guys and Aaron Gordon's wide open for the lob. And that's the finishing move. My favorite thing about Aaron Gordon is every time he does something sick and then like DeAndre Jordan, like holding back the bench from like something, you know, after at, at the end yeah. of one of those. And he just like runs onto the other sword, like just, just stone cold face. Doesn't even smile, never hypes himself up. He's just like, not about it. He's like, Nope, this is business. And my business is dunks and that's just what I do and they're going to look really cool and everybody else is going to appreciate them and I'm just going to play my game I love it um there's a bunch of other stuff that I want to get to from this one uh if this was really a finals preview then there's just going to be a lot of stuff that both teams will look back on when they watch this film in June like so I thought we could actually take the perspectives here of both sides kind of do one thing that we liked and one thing that we didn't like for each team so we could start with Denver since they won so like a thing that we liked about Denver when when they go back and look at the film and maybe something that they don't like when they go back and look at the film in this specific matchup. And the first one is Aaron Gordon for me, like finding his spots, not just the dunks and all that stuff. All that stuff is really great, but like finding those spots behind Boston's defense, which is 
been super dominant, like a great defense. They have a bunch of great athletes on that defense. And you always wonder, okay, like with an athletic kind of cutting ball movement team like Denver, is Boston going to be able to kind of switch and do all those things to kind of suffocate them and take all those openings that are usually their way? And that really wasn't the case for a lot of different reasons. But for me, like, you know, Jokic is going to get his. Jamal Murray is going to get his. But when Aaron Gordon is just finding his spots, cutting baseline, and being opportunistic, and you get that third guy involved, that's that's something I think I really like if I'm walking away from this one, if I'm Denver. Denver's balance in their starting lineup is just perfect. I mean, it, it really is. And this was, in a lot of ways, a, a battle of the starting lineups. Mm. You know, that, that's what this matchup comes down to a lot is, okay, you put your best five and their best five, and let's see what happens. And Denver's just, they're so familiar. They have so many different ways to beat you. So uh, I, I like it. I, I like your your assessment. Anything that you liked if you were walking away as Denver? Um, Jokic's ability, I, I, I thought Porzingis is a long, lanky shot blocker, and Jokic has really been good against him his whole career, but I feel as time goes on, that challenge seems easier and easier. And I would say the same for Tillman and, and for Al Horford. They, I think if you're Boston, you don't feel great about the impact you made on Jokic. It looked pretty easy for him tonight, and it looked like there was more but it didn't it didn't you don't walk away from this game feeling like Jokic showed his hand or showed his bag of tricks. You just walk away feeling like, yeah, that's that was pretty easy for him. Yeah, that was the thing I don't like if I'm walking away from Boston. I, I was gonna save that. But that I mean, not to bury the lead, but that really was to me the big takeaway from this game was okay, Boston, you went out there, every move you made was to get out of the East and then potentially right. face the Nuggets or probably the Nuggets, but whoever ended up coming out of the West, and you knew you were gonna need a big man to go up against Joel Embiid and some of these guys in your bracket and then potentially Nikola Jokic in the NBA Finals. And Kristaps Porzingis provided almost zero yeah. friction. You know, it was just – Right. Like, he just ate his lunch, man. Just like – like the one at the fourth quarter where he just had him had him down uh, beneath the rim and just footwork, footwork, pivot, pivot, boom, turns over, kind of gives him a little elbow shove. And next thing, like next thing you know, Kristaps Porzingis is sort of lunging the wrong way, and Jokic is just finishing off the glass soft like he always does. And you're just like, I don't yeah. know, if you're the Celtics, that's maybe your biggest panic thing is, oh yeah. my God, the seven foot one guy that we got this this summer who we're really excited about had almost zero defensive impact for us against Jokic. And and Tillman too, by the way, I know it's a small move. It's not like you expect him to be great, but why pick up Xavier Tillman? You pick him up because he might have to have an extra body, an extra six fouls against Joel Embiid and against Nikola Jokic. Well, he went out there tonight. He had no answers for you. Not that you expected him to have answers, but you expect it to be a speed bump, yeah. right? You know, there's no stoppers. There's just speed bumps. And tonight he did not look like a speed bump at all. They, 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 they always go two bigs at some point during most games. I thought they went with two bigs for longer stretches in this one, maybe looking to see if that was going to be an option for them. They could still go more minutes with Horford and Porzingis on the floor and maybe put more size in front of Jokic. But then that sort of has that trickle-down effect, right? Where, all right, well, now you don't have as much athleticism to chase around Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. and all these other things, too. And um, obviously their guards uh, as well, so... They're going to have to figure something out. The one thing I don't like if I'm the Nuggets walking away from this is just a three-point discrepancy. It wasn't a big deal because uh, Boston shot 29% from three, but they got up 38 of them um, and made 11 of their threes. Denver, they only went four for 21 in this game. Um, that's not going to happen either. It, it is hilarious. But it's not going to happen again, right? They're going to make more shots. Boston will make more shots, but they only got up 21 and if there's going to be an equalizer in a seven-game series, that might be it from Boston's point of view. And that's their tool, right? Like that's what they do. That's how they right. have been the most dominant team in the regular season. If I'm Boston, I'm, or if I'm Denver, I'm like, mm, we might need to shrink that gap in at least the attempts a little bit. You might, although I will say one thing that I think tonight proved proof of concept in this specific matchup. And look, the Celtics are good. This was a close game. Both times they played was a close game. Denver came out on top. So you don't want to go too far on any take. But – the one thing I think is that Boston is going to beat Denver in the games that they get an early lead, like a meaningful early lead. And I think mm -hmm. Denver is going to beat Boston in games when that doesn't happen. And a large part of that is when you're so three-point dependent, those three-point shots are just hard. You need to play free. You need to play loose. And Denver is just so steady and consistent. It's a lot of twos. It's a lot of paint points. But it's so steady that – you know, when you fall behind, you start to get a little nervous. Do I need to go to the rim? Do I need to get to the foul line? And I just think that was the case tonight. So you're right in part that Denver can shrink the gap, but I also just think Denver knows exactly who they are, and they did. They they played Nuggets basketball tonight. Outscored Boston in the paint by 12 points tonight. That was a big thing. 
Um, last one, if I'm Boston, the thing I like that I'm walking away from is that Jalen Brown is a battering ram and found creases in Denver's defense. Like that matchup I thought was tough for the Nuggets because you've got Aaron Gordon on Tatum, and that doesn't really leave like a great defender on Jalen Brown considering like his size and his strength. And it just felt like there were opportunities for him to go. He ended up obviously 41 points on 29 shots tonight, 14 rebounds four assists, two steals. Uh, his physicality really stood out if you're the Boston Celtics, who are sort of a finesse team. Yeah. And it felt like they almost needed to lean more into that physicality, and Jalen Brown was kind of that that answer for them. He was great tonight. Here's another thing, because I'll, I'll agree with you. I mean, he was phenomenal, including with Aaron Gordon, who's a big-bodied, great defender, and he, he kind of took it to him tonight even as a defender. But here's one thing I'll say. I'll go ahead to my thing you should worry about if you're Boston. Tatum had an interesting quote after the game about, hey, I don't need to get my points. If somebody else has it going, I'm okay going to the corner. So I'm paraphrasing, but something sure. to, that, to that effect. And I keep thinking this is the difference between Denver and Boston. Boston, when a guy gets going, the other players become stationary role players. Denver's offense is continuity. Everybody's always involved. It's it's almost always Jokic and Murray doing the scoring. But it's, it's not like, okay, now just get out of our, their way so we can do this thing. Everybody's always moving. There's roles for everybody at all times, and that's why they hit you with Porter 12 quick points, Gordon 12 quick points, Murray 12 quick points, KCP can get it going. So I just think it's a real difference that tonight Jalen Brown going off might have even contributed to Tatum not going off, and that's mm. just that it, it, it happens more often than not with that team, and it just seems to never happen with Denver. Adam, I hate to break it to you, but that's the difference between Denver and like every elite team. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the exception, not the rule. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's. But you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And and Tatum only 15 points on five of 13 shots tonight, so it wasn't a great game for him either. Um, Carl Anthony Towns is going to miss significant time, but the Timberwolves seem to be in good hands with Anthony Edwards. A wild ending to Wolves Pacers that we'll talk about next here on Locked On NBA. Today's episode of Locked On NBA is brought to you by eBay Motors. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On fantasy basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. Whether you're preparing for your daily draft or scouting the waiver wire every week, we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit your roster. So let's see who Josh has picked out for us in this week's eBay's guaranteed fit fantasy pick of the week. He's given us a few different players. I'm going to zero in on Kyle Anderson here with Carl Anthony Towns' future uncertain. Kyle Anderson's going to see a larger role and is going to likely start. He did start uh, in tonight's game against the Pacers. Um, the Wolves only play a couple of games uh, over the next few days. So if you are if you need somebody that, that to fill minutes in a, in, a, in a sparse lineup, maybe not the way to go. But uh, tonight, Kyle Anderson, not a great line. Three points on one of five shooting three rebounds, four assists, but he did play 28 minutes. And look, we're talking about end of the season waiver wire guys. You're looking for guys that are just going to get opportunities. I think this might be the worst game Kyle Anderson has is as the fill-in starter for Cat. Get him now on your waiver wire. Josh Lloyd from Lockdown Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. The same goes for your vehicle. And with over 122 million parts, for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof racks, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. Thanks for making Locked On NBA your first listen every day. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel before we get to the Timberwolves. The Nets announced that Ben Simmons will miss the rest of the season with a lower back injury. He played only 15 games this season, hasn't played more than 58 games since 2019. Adam, thoughts on the latest on Ben Simmons? I don't really have a whole lot of, of thoughts for him. It's not totally surprising given how much time he's missed that he would be that he would miss this year. To me, this feels still I, I'll say this. I still feels like a bounce back year for him. It almost is like 
he he played more than he had been playing and it hopefully is a bridge to next year which is the year where you would hope that he plays 60 70 games um you know and maybe gets right all fully back into it so to me i'm not really surprised and in a weird way i almost don't i don't consider it a failure i almost consider it like hey all right this is this can be a stepping stone so next season is the last season of his of that contract he'll be on the on the books for 40.3 million dollars um a contract year for ben simmons you know and and so you do hope that he can get better kind of get right and and make the most out of that opportunity too so uh it it just it, it's the brooklyn nets and everything was going wrong for them this year and the season was already over and now it feels almost like doubly over for them mm. that's yeah. that's kind of that's kind of my takeaway. Uh, in other injury news, the Timberwolves will be without Carl Anthony Towns for at least four weeks after he undergoes surgery to repair a torn left meniscus. He's expected back for the playoffs, according to ESPN. Meanwhile, in Indianapolis, the Timberwolves without Cat beat the Pacers 113 to 111, and that's because Anthony Edwards took over 44 points and a huge, unreal game-saving block on Aaron Neesmith in the final seconds. Anthony Edwards hit his head on the rim. Crazy. <laughs> Just an unreal performance by him overall. What do you make of the block and the Timberwolves without Cat uh, for a while? Let's just, let's start with Ant. Well, the block is insane. I mean, the elevation on it, that's pure adrenaline, by the way, because what does he have? 40-something inch vertical. He's got right. that. But then you get a running start, so you're going to jump even a little higher, and then you have the game saving adrenaline pumping through your veins the dude jumps 60 inches in the air i, I don't know if the highest he's ever jumped in his life I, well you know he that's true because he literally slams into the backboard he's so high like you did right. not anticipate it so it was athletically speaking one of the craziest plays you were going to see almost reminds you of lebron's block in the finals you know yes. closing the gap and it was incredible and every angle and every slow motion of it somehow makes it more incredible it made everything I, – I kept watching every version of that highlight, and I was like, it's even better. It's even better. It's even better. He got up so high, and he did tell the broadcast afterwards, the, the sideline reporter, that it was the highest he ever jumped, that his head hurt, and that when he <laughs> fell, his wrist hurt. Like, it yeah. was painful for him, and I'm like, He's gonna hurt matter. Tomorrow. Worth it. Worth it. Uh, yeah. I don't care if he misses games. Worth it. <laughs> Worth it for the highlight, man. Uh, Anthony Edwards, with like, look, it was 44 points on like 39 shots or something. So it wasn't the 30, most 35, 35 shots. So that's a lot of shots, man. It's a lot of shots. It wasn't the most efficient, but it's what they needed in this game. Right. And I, and I'm okay with it. And uh, with, with Carl Anthony towns out, there just wasn't, there's not a lot of guys who are contributing very much offensively, for, offensively for that team. And he reminds me so much of a young Dwayne Wade people like I'm old enough to remember like young Dwayne Wade winning games on defense. I don't think like the kids these days, Adam, remember how great D Wade was defensively, like dominant right. game changing game winning plays. And that's what that was like, Hey, how many shots do I got to take to keep my team in this? And then what can I do on the defensive end to give us a little extra edge and, 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 and a little bit of a better chance to win? Um, I remember Dwayne Wade, like getting a steal and, and uh, a floating three pointer at the buzzer against the Chicago bulls which ended up being the famous, like, this is my house, him on the on the scores table image. Like, that kind of feels like what Anthony Edwards just did, where he was, and because he gets up after that, and he is flexing, he is going nuts. His teammates right. are just gathering around him. Like, that's an iconic flashbulb moment for Ant's career. By the way, impressive flexing. <laughs> you don't need me to say this, but nope. when I flex like that, I don't look nearly <laughs> that cool. He looked really, you know, he looked good. He's been in the weight room. Let's um, talk about Cat a little bit, though. Well, uh, well hold on real quick, oh, just ahead. real quick. This was the sixth game this season with 35 or more attempts. For Joel Embiid, 70-point oh. game. Devin Booker, 62-point game. Carl T. Town, 62-point game. Steph Curry has the other two, one in a 60-point game and one in a 46-point game. So, mm. technically, this is the lowest-scoring 35-attempt <laughs> game of the season. Good for you, Ant. Another, another one for the record books. Uh uh, Carl Anthony Towns out for four weeks. Minnesota vying for the number one seed in the Western Conference. How big of a deal is this? It's a huge deal. I hate to say it. And maybe this puts Minnesota. I, I always think it's weird when a team goes from, you know, where they have been in the past, not really having playoff success, but this is a year they expect it, to all the way number one seed favorite. So I say this, and I'm not trying to troll. You know, I like this Timberwolves team a lot. 
it might end up being okay for them to fall in the standings and put them in a spot that's perhaps more comfortable. But I do think they're going to fall in the sta- standings. Listen to their schedule at Cleveland, at the mm-hmm. Lakers, at the Clippers, at Utah, at Utah. So that's all these straight road games. By the way, they played in a road game tonight, so they've been on the road. And then they go home and play Denver, Cleveland, Golden State. That it, all told, it's a nine-game road trip starting with or nine-game trip starting with this win they got tonight. But they're all difficult. They're if they're favored in any of the games, it's only going to be for by a point or two. So I think that they're probably going to fall just because of how tight the West is. You can't survive that. If you look at the, the box score tonight, Ant takes 35 shots. Nas Reed is the second shot taker with 15 shots. Yeah. Like, and then Gobert. So they clearly are going to have to establish a new identity. It can't be Ant taking 35 shots every night. And I just think it it's going to be though. It's gonna be I don't, it well, might end up being I, I just don't know where that our offense is going to come from with Cat out. They're a half game up on Oklahoma City right now uh, for the number one seed. Just one game over Denver. Denver's won now seven of their last eight. I think I have that right. Coming out they, of the break. Yep. Coming, coming out of the out break. Of with six break. in the row and then dropped one and then and then got this one against Boston. They're only three games up on the Clippers. And so seeds one through four are still very much sort of like in the mix right now. Right. In Minnesota, if this is bad for the next four weeks, they could drop. New Orleans is behind them by six and a half games they won't drop that far they're not they drop can't that drop far. that far but but i, th- but I do think they're going to be a three or big. four seed i think yeah. i think two teams pass them in the west probably oklahoma city and denver but big. you know we'll see um good news is that cat it sounds like he might be back for at least the first round of the playoffs but you never know but even that's tough even that's tough man and especially if you fall to a three or four seed you're talking about are you playing phoenix you know, are you, are you, you know, it's not, it's not going to be an easy one. I don't think so. No. Tough break for them. Um, we're going to take a break here. And then we already talked about one way a great uh, game can end. We're going to talk about a few other ways. Great games can end after this. Today's episode of Locked On NBA is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for your role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you uh, access to professionals that you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to go out and make your hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make this process easier. They even have just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and even quicker. 2.5 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for making Locked on NBA your first listen every day. It's Friday, which means it's time to count down to the weekend with our weekly power rankings. I'm not a system player. I am a system player. I already hinted at it, Adam, but what are we counting down this week? We are counting down the best ways to win a game. Because Anthony Edwards tonight won a game with a blocked shot, it made you think, what are the Hmm. best ways a game can end? What are the very specific ways? And I'm going to tell you, Wes, right off the bat, block shot did not make it, even though it was awesome. It was great. It did not make my final five. What if the block shot also includes hurting your head because you jumped so high (laughs) that it hit the rim and or backboard? Very close. Helps you out, but still, unfortunately, not in the top five. (laughs) Number five, though. Number five. And I'm going, I'm an old school guy. You know this, Wes. I'm an old school guy. I like a mid-range fall away. Of now the mid range fall away. This can be a turn. I think a turnaround fall away is the best. You think yeah, Jordan yeah. here? Yeah. You could be in the post, little shimmy shake fall away. Buzzer goes there, then you hit it. But it could also be the crossover. It could be the step back. Any type of fall away from the mid range. That's number five. I like it. Kawhi has had a few of those, especially yeah. in just Toronto Raptors days uh, during that 2019 run. It's just there's something artful about it. I like it. I'm 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 surprised it's only at number five. 
I like it a lot. I, there's there's some really good ones when you start to get into it. Number four. All right. This one takes me all the way back. I believe NC State won their championship back. What is it? 1983. I think they got this one. The tip back. Ooh. The tip in. You know, the shot misses. Everybody's holding their breath. The shot goes up and it's off and you think game over. But then comes the guy tips it just just tips it just enough for it to go in and then you have to look at the clock is the, was it too late i like the tip in the tip in's great the tip in is great because of the emotional roller coaster with it like you kind of talked about like oh my god they missed it we're safe we're safe like we got the game and then boom somebody else's fingertips come into the picture and then tip the ball in and you're like oh man Ron Artest had one of these, I believe, in the finals against the yes. Celtics, like to win it right at the tip in. It's just an, it's an all timer. Uh, Derek uh, White last year in the Eastern Conference Finals at the end of Game Six. That's right. Yep, they have to send it to Game Seven. Yeah, a little tip in. It was it was very dramatic. Just a tip. Number three, <laughs> number three, the second chance three pointer. The second, second, second also off the chance. offensive rebound. Wes, I'm throwing you a bone here. Ray, Ray Allen. Allen. Maybe. Ray Allen in the corner. You think it's over. Same thing. Loose ball. You're scrambling and it gets out. Or Robert Ory tap back to yep. him at the three-point line. There he is and drains it. There's some iconic ones. The second chance three. Scrambled play. Ball kicks out and there's a wide-open three-point shooter. And if you're the team on the defensive end of that, it's the worst feeling on, yep. on earth when a wide-open three-point shooter gets a second chance three. Similar emotional roller coaster, but even a bigger, steeper drop on the – uh, at the climax right where it, it it's just this absolute chaos and and the wide-eyed defender who left his guy to go crash the board turns around and it just turns out maybe it's ray allen in the corner oof that's tough that's tough man number two this one's kind of dirty it's kind of sloppy it's kind of messy the heave. the heave the heave aka the max Struess. <laughs> wasn't it Matt or no was it, was it, it was. who was it was it, it was Max Truce yeah Max Truce this last week the heave it's a little dirty it's a tough way to lose but it's a fun way to win it's it's uh it's it's March Madness through and through isn't it like it just feels like every yeah. year during March Madness somebody wins on a heave some up some low seed upsets a high seed on a heave it's dirty because it's not earned it's not a bad it's it's only <laughs> it's barely a basketball play they call yeah. it a heave for a reason it's they don't even call it a shot when it's far enough. it's not a shot. It's, it's not, not a, a shot. shot. You have to be two feet down. You're, it's your shooting motion. A heave is like, you just, it's not your natural shooting heave. motion. Yeah, he just <laughs> heaved it, man. He just heaved it. All right. That's number two? That's number two because number one, the deep three. The deep three. And if you if I say that, I'm curious real quick, Wes. If I say the game-winning deep three, what shot comes to mind? Ooh. That's a great. There's a couple a big question. ones. Yeah, I think about, I think about Durant's jumper over in front of LeBron. And what was that? The 2017 Finals. That one was closer to a regular three, but I. But you are was, not wrong. That, that was, was a good one, deep. though. That yeah, was deep. Kyrie's wasn't deep. Kyrie's was. I was on the line. Yeah, right the there. Line. Regular. What I you think, think you have Steph Curry. If you remember that great Warriors Thunder game from like 2015 or 2016, it was an right. all timer, and he hits like the running. He pulls up from he pulls up from like 40 feet. For, yes, for, there was two seconds left, and it took the full time for the ball just to get there. That's an all timer. And then Dame Lillard's uh, mm. series ending. Bye three. bye to OKC. Bye bye to OKC. Brandon Roy had an incredible deep three, if you recall, a couple years even before that. So the deep three to me is a special place. That's Lillard's whole career. Lillard's going to make the Hall of Fame based on how many game winning, game clinching deep threes he's made over his career. It's uh, got to guard him 40 feet out. If it's the last play of the game, don't let him get anywhere he can set his feet. I hope he makes one in these playoffs. Not against the Heat, but like against another team would be great. <laughs> It'd be great. Um, that'll do it for us today. Thanks for making Locked on NBA your first listen every day. Every day, or make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. You're subscribed on Odyssey, wherever that is, it is that you get your podcasts. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel.